Hi there, Cheryl here, and this is the card we'll be doing today. And I don't have a sentiment on the inside, so this is just stuck down with my my favorite thing, that <laughs> repositionable tape. But we have a lot of things on this card that we're going to do. So from the this beautiful frame oval frame this background we'll be doing ourselves for this card and our crackle roses now that's not the same thing as crackle and rose that's a neil diamond song so we'll be making our roses and um of course the the foliage that goes behind them so this is what we're going to need we're going to need a whole bunch of um very vanilla card stock a five by seven card so we need a piece that's ten by seven and scored and folded at five inches for the card base now I used a, a textured paper in whisper white or in, in white that I had but there's a there's a folder that an embossing folder that um, Stampin Up has and it's called subtle and it will give you a nice linen texture if I'd have had that before I bought this paper, then that's what I would have used and just textured the paper. And this is a piece I'll be cutting the oval for the front out of. And this is this is way bigger than I need. And then this is the piece that goes on the inside. This is four by six inches. And I have some um, mint macaron. I have just some little scraps. We'll be cutting the leaves um, for those. It's the rose leaves and um, some little sprays also from those. And then I have a piece, another piece of the mint macaron, and I'll be cutting the frame out of this. And this is, of course, this is way more than we'll need. We'll only need about half of this. And then we got all of our our um, very vanilla card stock. I have two pieces. This is a little more than a sheet and a half of card stock here. So this is almost two sheets of card stock. This one we'll be using for the background. We're not going to use all of it. We're going to stamp our, our nice stripes on here and then we'll be cutting it down to size. And I just want a nice big piece so we have plenty of room to work on that. So let's see, what should we start with? What else should we start with? Um, I'm using the woven heirlooms stamp and dies. And they have, let's see, let me get these out. So the bundle has the stamp set. It has the embossing folders for an oval and a rectangular shape. And it also has the cutting dies for the oval and the rectangular shape. So we'll be using that. We'll be doing the oval. Of course, that's what's on the front. And from here, we're going to use Wishing You a Day of Love and Joy. And that <clears throat> gives us a lot of different uses for the card. It could be a wedding card. It could be a birthday card, an anniversary card, um, just any kind of event. We'd be using this stamp right here for the stripe. And then I have to use these little flourishes on the inside just to just to jazz it up a little bit. So that bundle, the woven heirlooms bundle, we'll be using. I'm using the layering oval framelits. I'm using the largest oval from that set. We're going to use the crackle paint um, background stamp. Let me get that out while I have it here. And that's what's going to give us the texture on our roses. And it looks, they look so nice. Okay, and then from the Royal Peacock, that's where I'm getting my, um, my little f leaf flourishes here. And I'm using, see I've got these, 
now. So I want, I actually want this one also. There's three of them that comes with the set. There's two that go this way and one that goes this way. So I want, I want these two. And we cut those from the mint macaron. And then I have my classic rose from Heartfelt Creations. This is the classic rose. If this was the only set of stamps I had from um, Heartfelt Creations, if, if there was only one that I could have, this would probably be it. It's got the, the rose and you can make it in so many different sizes. And then it also has a nice leaf cluster with nice curly spirals on it. So we'll be using this and the dies and the 3D shaping mold. And that's Heartfelt Creations. Alright, and the inks we used. We're using the Memento Tuxedo Black. Rococo Rose, that's a new color that um, Stampin' Up! Has, has this year as their, one of their in colors. Um, crumb Cake, Mint Macaron, and Pear Pizzazz. Then I have my um, ball stylus tool here. I've got, got hot glue on the end there. But I'm going to be using the ball stylus on my uh, take your pick tool. I'm be using a makeup brush or if you have um, makeup sponges like, like this that haven't been chewed up by your cats. <laughs> Mine are all getting worn out. Um, not from me using them, but from the cats using them as cat toys. Because everything in my house is a cat toy. If you have cats, you'll understand that. So I'm going to be using a makeup brush to do some um, blending. Uh, I have the Nouveau Embellishment Mousse in this funny kind of green color. And this is, let's see, Sea Spray Green. So I'll be using that to jazz up our frame and some of our our foliage. Got a couple of sponge daubers here for my Rococo Rose and my Mint Macaron. Um, I have a stampin' I have a spritzer here. This was this is um, this is a nice little spritzer I got on Amazon, and it it sprays a very very fine mist. It's actually made I believe for um, essential oils. Um, to make like little perfume things and spray them on yourself, whatever. So, and of course I have my repositionable tape that I use for the inside. I'll be using the um, Designer Dries Clear Glue and also my Tombow Glue, my two go-to glues that I use, my adhesives. I have some um, thick foam that I'm going to be using for the um, underneath my frame here so it gives it a nice uh, lift and dimension. Uh, I know this is so much stuff isn't it? And ta-da! I'm going to use my glue gun today. And hopefully I won't I won't burn myself. So let's see where where oh where should we start on this? Let's you know what? Let's do the background. Oh, and I'm going to use my Stamparatus to do that background. I have these already mounted here. You can get rid of this black pad. And I just have a very thin piece of foam in here because I find that gives me a nicer impression on my stamps than just this um, backing here. So. We can bring in our nice big piece of very vanilla. And I have my my stripe stamp all the way over here on the side. Let me get that in the frame here. So all the way on the side as far as I could go. Okay. So what I did, I'll take this off. One edge, you'll see, one edge of the stamp has a much straighter side than the other. I took that and I just butted that up right here in the corner. 
And that's where we're going to start. And I just pick that up with my lid. And I'll put, put my magnet down way over here somewhere. Okay, so I need my mint macaron. And we'll ink that up. You notice I'm still using my old ink pads. I'm slowly replacing them with the new ones, but you know, I've been using this for quite a while, and you see it's really not worn at all. It's got a couple of cat hairs on it, but other than that, it's fine. And I could pick those off if I wanted. i going to ink that again. We'll press that down real good. And there we go. So we got a nice stripe there. So then what we're going to do, we'll pull this out and move it over one notch here and repeat I believe we made seven stripes on here there. let's see how that is okay and we pick it up, move it over one more. So again, this is mint macaron ink on very vanilla cardstock. And there we go. Move it over again. We'll just keep going with that. And this is so nice to use this the stamp positioner, the stamp apparatus for this this technique because it just gives us nice evenly spaced stripes. There's no worry about where you're placing them or or anything. And we're getting towards the end here. got two more stripes to go and when we get to the last one it's a little bit wobbly but it, it'll be fine there's not a whole lot once you get to this one there's not much there to for it to hold on to and one more. Okay, I'm going to close this up and get that out of the way. So there we go. It's quite nice. It's got this this like brush stroke stripe and it's got a little floral thing going on on the inside of it there. And we'll cut this out. And I will probably I'm gonna trim off a little bit on the ends here. So we need a piece that's five by seven for the front of our card. So it's five Five is like right here, but I want to trim a little bit off on this side, and let's turn it this way, and I'll show you where the seven is, seven inches is. Okay, so that's where it would be on seven, but we're going to, that would trim off a little bit of this, and then leave a blank spot at the top here. So I'll trim just a little bit off the ends. Here. And then I'll flip it over and I'll cut at seven inches. And 
and that puts both of our stripes right at the edge. Okay, I'm going to do the same here. Let's see, if I line this up in five, um, I could trim about a quarter of an inch off this end. And that gets, gets rid of all this blank area. Okay, so now I'll turn it around here and I'll line that up at five inches. And there we go. So there's our, our um, homemade designer paper. We're just going to take the makeup brush and antique it a little bit with the with the crumb cake. I don't know what that is. A little piece of paper or something. I don't know. I like to just rub it off a little bit here on my, my table and then we'll go back in and do some antiquing along the edges here. See, things like this, it doesn't matter if you're wonderful, if you're wonderful at blending or not, because it's ma you're, you're making it look antique. And when it, the paper in gets old, it doesn't necessarily, um, doesn't necessarily age um, evenly. here and darken that up a little bit. I'm going a little bit darker than on my original. Just to give it a little different look and then you can decide if you want to go lighter or you want to go darker. The main thing to remember is start out light and build it up and until you get the darkness you think you want. So there we are and it's just and clean my brush down a little bit more up the top there. There we go. So it's just a looks like an old antique dirty piece of paper. So now we'll move we'll I'll clean the table up and we'll move on to the roses. So I have my crackle background stamp here. And I'm going to ink this with the Rococo Rose. And you notice I just have it on my table. I find this is the easiest way to do a big background stamp like this. And I'll take my piece here and just lay that down on there and give it a good rub all over. You, make, you want to make sure that it doesn't shift while you're doing this. Okay. So there I have my crackle design on this piece. And I'm going to do this full piece here too. You notice I got a little smooch on there. That does. That's not going to matter. That little bit there may not even end up on a rose. So there's going to be a lot that we're going to be cutting off. Place that down like this. And again, give that a good rub all over the back here. And one more time, we'll ink this up. And I'm just going to ink up, like, not all of it. I'm going to leave like the last inch here uninked because I'm not going to use that and I can kind of see the pattern through the paper so I can line that up 
kind of there. If it doesn't match up, it really doesn't matter because it's we're going to cut rose petals out of this. You see? So there we go. I don't have any pattern right there. If I wanted to, I could ink a little bit and, um, and pick up the pattern, but I'm not going to. I think we'll have plenty between these two pieces of paper to cut our roses. And let me get this out of the way. Because that's now all inky. And when we cut the roses out, we're not stamping the rose first. We're just going to take the die from these and we're going to cut these out. Um, to do these roses, I need, let's see, I wrote this down. For the large rows, I need two of each of these. Then I need two of these, or two of this size. Wait a minute, I'm getting confused. This is, it, this can be confusing, that's why I wrote it down. I want two of each of these. I want one of this one, one of that one, and then one of the smallest one. And that's for my large rows. Now, for my medium rows, I want two of the smallest. I want two of the next size up. And I want one of this size. And then for the small roses, I need one of this size and I need two of the smallest. Okay, so and then we're going to be doing one large rose, we'll be doing three medium roses, and we'll be doing two small roses. And I don't remember how many times I cut each of these out. I know I need to do this one twice. And then I just do as many as I as I can. Let's see. I need three. I need three of these. So these the size here. So I need to do this one at least three times. And then just whatever is left, I, I'll just do with this this die right here. When I when I cut them out. I'll have to take this over to the big shot. Then, let's see. Oh, and I cut cut my oval out too while I was cleaning, cleaning up my table. I cut my oval for my frame out. That will have to go back to the big shot. And unless you buy the plate that that's They've just come out for these special new embossing folders. I don't know. You're going to have to shim it. I shimmed it. It has actually a little, little diagram here. Of how to how to do this. But I just played around until I, I got a good impression on it. So we want to have it with the Stampin' Up logo facing front. That's the front of the, that will emboss our oval. And I found the easiest way to line this up is to line up this inside part of the oval. Get that lined up. Now hold that in place down the bottom here. Close this up and I'll grab it at the top and hopefully it doesn't shift. And I think it did a little bit. So this might take a little bit of playing. Nope, it's good. It's actually, it's good. I don't need to play with that at all. You might have to play with it a little bit. But it it makes such a beautiful, beautiful frame for on the card that it's well worth the messing around with it. Okay, so we're going to cut those out. We're going to, we're going to run that through. Um my thick foam. I'm going to take this um, die and I'm just going to put that on my foam like so and I'll use my ball 
stylus on here. And I'm just going to go and make little pokes all around the inside here. And I'll make pokes all around the outside. Oop, got to get that right next to it. This is going to be our guide for cutting out our pop-up foam. Be using this in place of um, dimensionals. That'll give us our nice sturdy base underneath our our um, our oval frame. So now you see these little dots, and we're just going to cut inside those dots about a quarter of an inch, eighth of three eighths. No, quarter of an inch is good. So I'll just get my scissors and cut all along that. Just like that. So the outside's done. And then we're just going to poke, poke in here. Be careful of your fingers. Don't want to poke your fingers. Especially if you, have a, if you have nice pointy scissors. Mine aren't that pointy. And we'll just cut that out. And that'll be all ready to go on our card. Okay, so there we go. We'll put that aside somewhere here. And we need to stamp our our leaves. So let me pull my leaves out here. Oh, I have them on a block already. I don't need to pull them out. And I'll need my mint macaron. This is the one that these sprays are going on. So I'll put those together like this. And we're going to want at least four, five of them. We're going to want at least five. I think I cut like six last time. So I have a, see I have a spare one. But we'll stamp our leaves on here. And we are using... Pear Pizzazz. I know. Pear Pizzazz on Mint Macaron. We want our leaves a little bit different in color. But not totally different. So let's see. There's one. We want three of these. We'll be using two at the top side there. Two... And, hmm, there we go. That'll fit right there. Three of those. And we're going to use our, we're going to use mint macaron, and we're going to shade those a little bit before we cut them. I have my sponge dauber and I'm gonna I'm gonna get my the tendrils real good. I want those nice and dark. And then around the outside edges of the leaves I'm gonna concentrate my color there so that we leave a little spot in the center that's not not colored uh, other than the colored paper and see what I have going on there at least I've left the inside part there these are going to get shaped too there's nice there's a nice well in the um, in the rose shaping mold to do these leaves it gives it such a nice texture I'm so glad that that um, heartfelt creations came up with that idea 
there to make these um, shaping molds are like gigantic embossing folders and it saves so much time when you're making flowers or like these leaf clusters this would take so long to do this by hand but now I can just just cut them out and put them in there and and pretty much all the shaping is done for sometimes you want to add a little bit extra but most of the time that's not even necessary so there we go so our leaves have nice shading on that maybe a little bit more on this one that one was looking a little pale okay so there we go those are ready and we'll have to wait until we cut our flowers out to shade those we'll do we're just going to do a little edge sponge a little bit on the edges on those and let's see what else could we do with inks right now oh i know we can stamp our sentiment on the front for the front of the card and then i'll be able to cut that out with our with our the largest oval from the layering oval set so i already have it on here i've checked it i've lined up used the grid pattern on here to line up my my sentiment so it's nice and straight but you'll notice i gave myself plenty of room here so that i can adjust um, where i want to cut the oval and have the sentiment on it so there we go we'll ink that up with the tuxedo black that oh you know what we didn't do we didn't do the inside of the card either did we hmm how much time have i got okay i still have 10 minutes before i have to stop Oop, and go go do my um do all my die cutting for the card I clean that ink off my hand you see I got a black tuxedo black all over my hands I don't want to smear that all over everything okay so we have that ready I can put that and that together and here's our our piece that's going to go on the inside of the card and we'll need our sponge dauber our mint macaron and these this little flourish from the um from the stamp set from the uh, woven heirlooms stamp set and you could put your flourish however you like I put mine in my corners just like this So I just have this little short, this little end here, that's going into the corner. They don't give me a right and a left one, so it really does, doesn't matter. We'll just have them in the corners, just like this. Okay, so we got all four corners done. Oh, I still need my ink pad. And I have my mint macaron sponge dauber here still. And I'm just going to dab this out a little bit on the side. And bring that in. We're just going to do a little bit of mint macaron. Going a little bit deeper in the corners. So it's much like we did on the front of the card. Except we're using mint macaron. We are not using crumb cake just all around the edge and the corners and then I would do the other edges and these corners also so let me I'll finish that up and I'll get all my pieces cut and then we'll come back and we'll start putting the card together oh no we have to make our roses crackling roses okay so we'll do that and then we can put our card together 
So everything's cut out now. I'm just going to add add a little um, sponging to the edges of our all of our roses with the Rococo Rose. That just helps to give our rose a little dimension. Um, on my original I did it without sponging on the edges and it just all the petals just kind of ran together and this just separates them a little bit makes it look fuller. I went back and I did go back and I just sponged a little bit like this around the the pre-made flowers just just to give them a little pop but it I think it's better to do it this way before we do that and on a bunch of the the smallest ones I did the back also that's going to be those are going to be like our little buds in the center and they'll fold up once we've shaped them with the mold those will fold up like this and make a little um, tight rosebud in the center so let's also do um, our our leaf sprays and our our um, our frame here with the embellishment mousse now it's been pointed out to me that a lot of people have suggested that you don't put your finger in in the mousse because it can cause mold or something or I, I don't know bacteria growth but I've been doing this on mine for since I got them for this is like a year two years maybe and I've had no problem with that um, I do wipe my fingers a lot with the uh, baby wipes so maybe that has something to do with that because I get them all inky and stuff so um, that's up to you whether you want to avoid doing that or not um, I don't know what you would use maybe a bit of a paper towel or rubber gloves I don't know but um, I just use my finger and get that and I just rub that on I rub that on my little leaf sprays here like that get them nice and and shiny doesn't take very long to do Now, one thing that I will share with you with my mousses, before I put them away, whenever I use them, before I put them away, I do give them a little spritz with water. And I don't, I don't use like bottled water, or filter, I use, fil it's filtered water that I get from my tap. So if you don't have a water filter, then it might be best to um, get yourself some bottled water, some purified water. But um, I give them a little spray to keep them from drying out because they probably will over time. I notice this one's a little hard right now. I'll give that a good spray before I put it away. And I'm just rubbing it on the frame here trying to pick up the highlights, the higher edges with this, um, with the mousse just um, brings out the um, brings out the, the design in it a little bit better I think and I guess I threw my baby wipe away because I do need another one now to wipe my finger off I've got a lot of that stuff on my fingers see I think that's why I don't get any bacteria or mold growing in mine Okay, so we've got that done. Let me let me spray my my mousse before I forget about it. I give that get that some nice sprays there, and we're ready to shape our our roses. And we'll be using 3D shaping mold here. Let me get that out. Put all 
our leaves off to the side. Now you see it's got nice depressions on here. It's got four corners that have a divot and it has one that has just a, a cut off edge here. You'll notice on the lid there's one edge that does not have a little foot on it like that and that's how you know how they go together so those little feet go like that and that's that I'll have, I'll have to do this several times to get all of my flower pieces done but they just go in the mold like this and there are um, you do have to kind of look there's one that has these two little wings on it. I look for that one to place it in the mold. And I have that one there. And let's see, where is that? Right there, it looks like. So I place them in like so. Dun, dun, dun. Isn't this exciting watching me do this? So I'll fill this all up with my flower petals. They say you can stack them up, but I don't like to do that because I find they stick together and then I lose track of some. But once I get everything in the mold here, I'm going to give it just a couple light spritzes to get all my, my uh, roses just a little dampened. And then this gets put on top like so. And I run it through my Big Shot with the two plates. Not the base plate, but the two cutting plates that come with it. So this takes the place of your, your thick base plate. Okay, so I'm going to finish filling this up. And give it my little spritz. And I'll run it through the Big Shot. And I'll get all of those um, shaped for us. And then we can come back and put the roses together finally. I know this is quite an involved video. There's so many different things that I wanted to share with you. So I'll get all of that done and be back. So all my flowers are shaped now and I have them sorted out by my flowers. I have my three medium sized flowers here set up and I have my two small ones here put those aside for the moment. I have my hot glue gun heating up here and my little thing to catch my drips. Let's see if it's starting to melt yet. Mm, maybe not yet. Ah, uh, there we go. I've got some hot glue coming out now. I'll just put a dab of that in the center of my flower here. And I'm working on my silicone mat. Now, if you don't have a silicone mat, um, you might want to work on something that your flowers are not going to stick to. Now, that's not very hot yet. But let me get some hot glue on there. I'm kind of melting what was on there already. Okay, let's see if I can get this on here real quick. There we go. I'm going to press that down real well with my thumbnail. If you don't have a thumbnail of any length, then you could use your ball stylus. Oh, here's, a, here's a little tip for those little spider webby things you get. You can, when you're all done, you can give it a little, hit it with your hot glue gun, or your, um, not your hot glue gun, with your heat tool a little bit. Not too much. You don't want to melt your glue that's holding the flowers together. But it will, if you just blow that hot air on them a little bit, it'll get the, um, all the spider webs off. Okay, so I put two Two of my big ones, two of the next size down, and I'm offsetting the petals. And you see how it's building up real nice here. See that? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? 
and then then the next one of the next size down ones so this is the third from the largest get that in there and press that in with my my stylus now I'm going to start going the opposite direction. I'm going to start from going start going out from the middle. This is going to be my middle my middle petal. I'm just going to poke that down a little bit. And then I'm going to crinkle it up just like this. I'm going to make myself a nice tight little petal here. Or a little cluster of petals. And I'm going to a nice size glob of hot glue on there. You see that? You stick that into the other small one I have here. And I'm going to just wrap that up around it. See that? I'm going to hold it just for a second. And now we have a nice little a nice little rose bud type of thing for the center of our flower. And then the next one I'm going to bring those petals up too. I'm going to do that while my hot glue is still still liquidy. It hasn't set up. And then a nice little glob on there. And that will go right into the center here. And I can use my my stylus here or my ball stylus yeah, to um to poke it in the middle and there's our our large rose formed and we're going to do the same on all of these with the exception of the small ones on the small ones one well I'll show you a small one the middle sized ones are done the same you do one large or one of the and this is the um, third one down and then two of the fourth one down in size. I'm going to offset those. And then you have your two smallest ones. And you do this just the same as we did the large rows. Okay. For the small flower though, it's a little different. I'll show you a small one. So we have the two smallest and then one up from that. So this is our our center one. This is the one we colored on the inside. We're going to bring that up just like this. And then we're just going to do this just like it was um, the flower center. And we want to bring this up but we're not making a complete rose bud this time we're gonna leave that open just a little bit you see I hope I'm explaining this well to you and then on this one we just put a little glob of the glue and we'll bring those petals up a little bit too while that glue is hot and there we go there's one of our small roses so I'm gonna finish up doing these roses um, now that I showed you how to do it and then we'll come back and we'll put the card together now finally we can start to put our card together I'm gonna to start with our little oval frame here you use the Tombow glue and I've already checked to make sure that my my foam piece will be totally hidden behind my my um, cut and embossed oval here so there we go And that that can be put aside and give it a chance to dry a little bit and we'll put the well you know what let's put the inside on 
but we're just going to put it in with um, the repositionable tape. Then we won't have to try to do this later on when we have all the embellishments on the front of our card. And just get a nice amount of Tombow on there. I'm using the Tombow because the Tombow gives me just a little bit of time to get things lined up and I like to I like to do this to get everything lined up. I stand my card up and now I know it's all even with the edges. Next I'll put my my sentiment oval on. Try to center that in the card. Get that right there. And then we can do our decorative oval here. Decorative oval frame. And that will go just like so. And Again, it's centered on the card. And it's time to put the flowers on. Now I'm going to put, put two leaf clusters up here. We just want to make sure that it doesn't extend past the edges of our card. So I'm going to switch from my Tombow to my Designer's Dries Clear Glue. Just put a little bit in the middle here, maybe. Come on, glue. Come on out. I know you're in there. There we go. Just like that. And I like these curly things on them. Little viney things. I mean, roses don't have vines, but I like them anyway. I don't care. Put this one here. Got a little viney thing going off the side there. There. Now we can start putting our roses on this part. Put my nice big one right here in the center of my, of my leaves. And I'll just hold that down for a little bit. Just make sure that it gives, gets good contact there. And I think it might be all right. Then we're going to put a medium one on either side. Put that right here. I'm letting some of the leaves show in between here. And put our other medium sized one over here. And then we could put tuck in some of these. So I want one coming off the bottom here. I'm just gonna slide that right in there. Just like that. And let's see, I need another one. I've got one there. I need one up here, right? Let's get that. Let's slide that in underneath here. And then I have room here. I can tuck one in right up here too. Slide that in a little bit more so that it's not going past the edge of our card here. All right, now we can do the bottom. This is when I think it gets 
a lot to be a lot of fun is when you're finally getting the card together at the end and everything just falls into place now before I put my put my flowers on on this one I'm just gonna because the flowers are kind of small I'm gonna tuck these in underneath here There probably won't be a whole lot of room. I had plenty of room to tuck these in. If I found that the stems didn't go slide in easily, then uh, I could always cut those long stems on these little leaf sprays off. Here's a nice medium rose. We'll put that one right there. And our two really small ones, the smallest of our roses can go right there for one and right up here for the other one get on there now I think I'm gonna have to give it a little poke with my ball stylus and this is it. This is the end. Our card is finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have liked it, then be sure to hit that like button down below. There's a like button down there. And um, if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. If there are any Stampin' Up! products that you'd like to purchase that I've used in this video today then you can do that either through my Facebook page or my blog and that information is down there too. Um, if you have any questions or comments then be sure to leave those down below. There's all kinds of stuff going on down below there today. Well and every day. But um, I think that's it. Is that it? That's it. So, y'all, take care, stay safe, and happy stampin'.